You're listening to Paris' State of Mind on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio. Welcome to Paris, a state of mind. Join us as we talk about the good, the bad, the ins, the outs of property rentals and purchases in and around Paris. We'll have topics for renters, owners, and visitors, share questions we are regularly asked, and more. My name is Gail Boisclair of Perfectly Paris, and my co-host is Marie Pistinier of Lokim Paris Be a Part of It. Both of us are proud members of the SPLM, the first representative body of furnished rental professionals. Hello, everyone in the Paris podcast world. We are back in the recording studio for Paris, a state of mind on Paris Underground Radio with one of our wonderful co-hosts. Well, not co-host on my show, but host on one of the other podcasts. And we are continuing along with our series about why people like, or maybe don't like, living in their arrondissement. So today, I have the great pleasure of having as a guest, Lily Heisey, is also a podcast host on uh, the Paris Underground Network. Her podcast is called Romancing in Paris. But excitingly enough, you probably have heard of Lily from her writing. She is both a writer and tour guide based in Paris. So Lily, welcome. Well, it's a great honor to be on your podcast, Gail. I'm an avid listener of your podcast as well, you and your podcast with Marie. And I find that your topics are thoroughly interesting and very valuable for anyone living or thinking of living or spending time in Paris, even short term or long term. Oh, thank you. Well, I try. It's hard because you have to kind of cover all bases, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But I've I've uh, found some topics. I've lived in Paris a very long time, and there are many topics pertinent to all types of listeners. Yoo-hoo. Well, getting on with what we're talking about today, can you tell us what arrondissement uh, you currently live in? So I live in the 18th arrondissement, as do you. But we live in different parts of the 18th arrondissement. And as you've touched on in some of the other episodes, and as many listeners probably know, arrondissements in Paris can have many sub-districts. And each of those sub-districts has its own personality. And uh, I live in a very specific part of the 18th around Abbas, which is Montmartre, one could say as well. Yes, I definitely think that when it an outsider or even people that live here. If you say that uh, you live in Montmartre, they assume you either live by Abbesse or Le Marc Coulancourt, but usually Abbesse. Yes. And how long have you lived there? So I've lived in Montmartre and Abbesse. <laughs> Why don't we just call it Montmartre for our listeners? I've lived here for, I start to lose track. I've lived in Paris for 22 years. And I've lived in Montmartre for, I think, 19 years, something crazy wow. like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the same. I've been here since 2001 and I've only ever lived in the 18th. Wow. And why did you choose to live in Montmartre? Is it just because what you found available or was it where you really wanted to be? So that's a really good question because I'm a convert to Montmartre. <laughs> <laughs> I did not come here out of choice. So back in the day, you know, I moved to Paris when I was uh, fairly young. And uh, so you take yeah, you take uh, what you can get. And I was living in East End Paris, which I'm quite fond of. I was living in the 12th, very close to the 11th. And uh, back then, you know, hipsters didn't exist yet. <laughs> but it was just a cool, more local neighborhood. And I enjoyed that. And my last apartment in the East End was right near Bastille, Place de la Bastille, which was super central. And I could walk everywhere from there. And I really loved that aspect. But I liked the kind of edgier, more local vibe of the East End. But that apartment was fairly expensive. And and I was kind of in between jobs and was having trouble paying the rent. And And I needed to leave that place. And a friend of a friend, this is often how it is in Paris, but not always, 
A friend of a friend said, oh, well, my ex-boyfriend's landlady has all these empty apartments in Montmartre. And I was like, oh, Montmartre, I don't. And it wasn't that I, I felt that, oh, I didn't want to be near tourists and we'll get around to that. It was that because I love walking so much, I felt like I was going to be too far from the center. And we'll talk about that too. And so I was a little reluctant to move here, but having lived in two different apartments here, and then like I just said, for almost 20 years, I've grown to love the neighborhood. And uh, I was recently offered an opportunity to move to a different neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to leave Montmartre because it's really grown on me. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Well, yeah. You feel that way now, and but do you wish that you weren't living in Montmartre? Do you wish that maybe, is there part of you that wish you lived somewhere else? Well, I do really like the area around Rue Montargoy, so if someone were to, but it's fairly expensive, if someone were to <laughs> offer me an apartment on one of those side streets that had a little balcony and was bigger than my current apartment, I have to say I wouldn't say no. <laughs> And what is it that you love most about where you're living now? So I love a few things about Montmartre. Um, You know, uh, for those listeners who might know the area a little less, and for those Parisians who I'm going to win them over a little to Montmartre as well, it is a former village. And so it was a village on the outskirts of Paris, previously a monastery. I do tours here, so I know the area and its history very well. And so it evolved in a very different way from central Paris and is very charming and picturesque. But because it's also on a hill, it offers beautiful views of the city. So the pace is a little slower up here from the rest of the city. You have these kind of enchanting, whimsical views and vistas and places to stroll. So it's a wonderful place to stroll. I love that. But it really still has a village-like feel in many regards. There's the Market Street, Rue des Abbas. Okay, it can be a little pricey, but people know each other. There are people who've only ever grown up here, and they live in the area, and they're really fond of it. So you do have a neighbor, a real neighborhood feel. And unless you live there, and uh, this goes out to those Parisians who might not think that uh, Montmartre is very local, it really is. Once you live here and once the tour groups go, you really have a, a local feel. You do need to know where to go and how to find that. But I do really feel like it is a neighborhood with a lot of heart and soul. And there are very touristy parts of it too, but you walk literally one street away and it completely changes. So I like that village feel of Montmartre and its ambiance and its walking history. Yes, I I do agree. I, I agree with everything you said, of course, since I live in the 18th. And would you say for somebody who hasn't ever visited and are thinking of maybe maybe living in the area, do you think it's more catering to families, couples, swinging singles, grandma and grandpas? <laughs> well, I slightly dissuaded for grandma and grandpas of your list just now. And the only reason is, well, fit grandma and grandpa absolutely is it's very hilly and there are lots of cobblestones and a lot of the apartments are old and don't necessarily have elevators. So of the group you just listed, I might slightly dissuade it for anyone who has even slight knee issues. <laughs> um, it might be a bit problematic. But what's great about it is it fits all those categories. There are families here, there are young people, because for those swinging young people that you mentioned, a stone's throw away is the hip area of Pigalle, really. And that's what I like is, you know, I can be sipping cool cocktails down on on Rue Frochot, and then I just, you know, in eight minutes, I'm back home in quiet uh, Montmartre. And so And there are some lively bars just right here, but very close. You know, there are even like the biggest disco in Paris is, you know, nearby. And and so the bright lights and busy action of nightlife of Paris is really at the doorstep where some other neighborhoods in central Paris, that isn't the case. So this is what makes it very easy to stay up here and never leave. For families, the apartments might be a little bit smaller, but it's like anywhere in Paris. There's something for everybody. And there are some parks nearby. 
That's my one little gripe with Montmartre. The larger parks are a bit further away. And so if you do, it's not the greenest neighborhood. But Park Monceau isn't far and Park Martin Luther King, the modern park, which is quite nice, but a 20 minute walk. So you can get some green spaces nearby, but it does. uh, It's a great neighborhood for all, uh, all walks of life. I agree. And uh, is there something that, well, I guess it might be, might be that what you just said. Is there something that you wish you knew about the area before you moved here? I mean, it might have parked, for example. Yeah. So, and my little kind of issue with Walmart that I mentioned at the beginning, I was like, oh, it's far away um, from central Paris. It really isn't. It depends on where you want to go in central Paris. If you want to go to the left bank, it's quite the hike. But it, the Canal Saint-Martin and Châtelet area, Montorgoy that I just mentioned, um, the Opera District are all within a half an hour walk. So it is possible to get to many great places on foot. But my one kind of, you know, issue with Montmartre are green spaces. There are a few pocket gardens, but I'm talking pocket. There's quite small where, geez, let's say if you wanted to, you know, go run around them, you'd be, you know, run around them in about 20 seconds. <laughs> And but they are lovely, but yes, to get to a larger park, Park Monceau, which is a medium sized park, is about a 20 25 minute walk, or on the subway, you know, well, cuts it down to maybe 12 minutes. But that's my one issue with Montmartre is its lack of a nice bigger park nearby. Mm-hmm. It's true, it's funny considering how large even the 18th in its entirety is. There probably are a lot of uh, lacking of green spaces. It's true. Yeah, I think it probably is the least green neighborhood in yeah, Paris. That's why. I mean, I really didn't think about it until somebody else mentioned it, living in the part of the 18th by Chateau Rouge. And it's true that when you start thinking about it, there's not a lot. Yeah. I used to, as you know, at my old apartment, I lived downstairs from a big park. So I used to take my daughter down there when she was younger. Yes. So for small parks, for like children playing, there's no problem. So, but for strolling parks, we're a little bit further away from strolling or jogging parks. (laughs) Well, I think that I might, because you've alluded to this a little bit, know an answer to the very, very last question that I have for you. But if the magic apartment fairy of Paris comes down and grants you the wish of any apartment in any area. Tell us about that apartment and where it would be. So I actually know the apartment. I've been spying on it. So because I found the perfect apartment is beneath the hill, because I have to say the hill gets a little tiresome. I live quite high on the hill, not at the very top, but literally about 20 paces from the peak of the hill. So it does get a little tiresome, especially at night. And if you're, you know, had a long day trudging up the hill, because you know, where I live, the funicular is not nearby. And so it's not that useful. Um, So, you know, unless a car drops you off at your doorstep, you do have to climb a part of the hill to get here. But there's a little square in the ninth. So the ninth is the district just south of the 18th. And so there's this little square, very charming, quiet, and um, but uh, literally a block from the edge of Montmartre. And so if someone gave me that apartment, that apartment fairy you mentioned, I'd be very happy to accept um, <laughs> to accept uh, that. Uh, that speci- I have a very specific apartment there. It has a rooftop terrace and a balcony, and it faces southwest. Oh wow! It's, yes, yeah, but like we said, the apartment fairy. So I would take that one over anywhere else. So technically you're almost in Montmartre, but you're in the ninth, which I like too. The ninth is a little more local, but still it's a great, lots of great restaurants and shops. Um, But so I would take that one, but then I would take an apartment off of Rue Montorgoy's because I love walking and it's so central. And so that would be second choice. So first choice, the ninth then, almost in where you are now. (laughs) Place in the ninth. (laughs) And so would this apartment be like an old style housemanian type of building or more modern? 
Well, I I do have to say I loved your old apartment, Gail. So for anyone who just hasn't seen it, it was a lovely, it had a lovely double living room um, and overlooking this green space. So the ideally it would be house minion, but the apartment I've found, which someone else lives in, (laughs) I'm just waiting for one day for them to leave, is in an old new apartment, but fashioned to look like an art deco building. So... Um, yeah. So then I'm like, oh, well, you know, then it'll have an elevator. But ideally, you know, I'm a little bit more partial to a nice house mini and building on the sixth floor. So you don't have neighbors above you with parquet and, and but a bright apartment, some something that uh, has a bit of a view green space in front would be ideal. Yeah, I do agree that it's nice. I'm, I've been so lucky. As you say, my last apartment, I overlooked a green space. Here, even though it's not as nice as my last apartment, I still overlook a green space. It does make a difference to see a little bit of outside when you're inside, especially for people that sometimes have to do a lot of work from home or a home office. Absolutely. If you're enjoying this episode of Paris, A State of Mind, you may also be interested in our sister podcast, Storytime in Paris. Join Jennifer as she asks five questions to authors who've been inspired by Paris. Paris, A State of Mind will be right back after a word from our sponsors. And now back to Paris, A State of Mind. Thank you for all of that. Anything else you'd like to tell our audience? Yeah, so about Montmartre. And so the area, one thing that is a highlight are many apartments have lovely views. My current one doesn't. Because Montmartre's on a hill, you can find places with stunning views. So that's another uh, advantage. My previous apartment was a six-floor walk-up, quite small and run down. But it had a view of Sacre Coeur very close. It was a super enchanting view. And so, uh, so that adds a little extra magic. Rudy's Abbas is great. Um, there are lots of shops along there. Some of the more traditional shops are being overtaken by small, uh, like kind of like mm, classy French chain shops, which is a little bit too bad. But because so many people live in Montmartre, a lot of the food shops are still there. So there's, I highly recommend the Cave des Abbas, which is the local wine shop. There are phenomenal bakeries around here. And so uh, you can never run out of um, good bread and pastries in the area. A little dangerous, but if you're, <laughs> since it's the hill, it's, um, yeah, you can walk up the hill. There's some great cheese shops as well. And so for that, it's really lovely. The If you're interested in markets, there are two markets nearby. There isn't an open air street market right here, but on Rue des Abbes, there are lots of food shops. But the Organic market in the 17th, well, border of the 8th and the 17th at Batignol, the organic market on Saturday mornings. There's also the Barbas market. So for people who like uh, food markets, there's plenty nearby. So for people who live here, there's uh, easy access to that. There are some great local hangouts and some good restaurants. Now, Montmartre wasn't traditionally known for its restaurants. It's improving. I am quite partial to the little bar on Rue des Abbes called Le Village. Yes, the village. <laughs> and it's a little bar and it has happy hour and it has, it definitely has more of a local vibe uh, compared to some of the other cafes on Rue des Abbes. And there's a nice bistro on the street Rue Veron. It runs parallel to Abbes. It has a lot of restaurants on it. And there's a nice bistro called Ma Biche, which does brunch on weekends. But then if not, it's only open in the evenings. They do, you know, locally kind of sourced ingredients or carefully sourced. And and so there are some nice places to eat in the area. Like I mentioned, for a livelier ambiance, you're not far from the uh, trendy cocktail bars and clubs around Pigalle and uh, Rue Fontaine. So there is kind of like a buzzing ambiance nearby uh, if you want something a little more exciting. Um, So it really is a a great place to live. 
And I have to confess, I'm like some other people. I don't leave the neighborhood very much. And it's funny, you did talk a little bit about this in your last episode with Emily on the 10th. You know, so uh, once we get fond of our, our quartier, our neighborhood, we don't necessarily like to leave. So it is like pulling teeth sometimes to get me to leave Montmartre. <laughs> but because I do tours, uh, they sometimes drag me out of the neighborhood. But it's a it's a great place to live. It's a, can be a little bit pricier than some areas, but it's certainly like for rent, but it's not the most expensive neighborhood either. So you can find reasonable accommodation here, but it's it's definitely not a budget neighborhood, but I'd say upper mid range. And for holiday goers, I know you have uh, people who listen to the podcast who are uh, coming here on vacation and you do specialize in apartments in Montmartre or the 18th and the northwest part of Paris. It's a great place for people, especially on a second and beyond trip. So I think for a first trip, people might want to stay a little bit more central, but for a second, third, fourth, 10th, 20th, 50th trip to Paris, I do think it's a nice place to be based because you do have this kind of neighborhood feel, Rue Colancourt and uh, Rue d'Amremont nearby as well. So it is a, a great place. And for those people coming for an extended stay as well, it can be a great place to be based. I agree. Well, thank you very much, Lily. You're welcome. It's a wealth of information. It was very informative. And I think that it was so informative. We have to tell people how they can reach out and contact you. Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, I have a website called jetemmeneither.com. And I am a bit of a specialist in romantic Paris, but I have other topics on my website, not just about romantic, original romantic things to do in Paris, because I love exploring the city, strolls, things like that. So you can find an abundance of information like that on my website. I write for international publications on travel, Paris, uh, France, and beyond. So I have a great article on my website about the best views from Montmartre. And so if people, and the best views of Sacre-Cœur, not only from Montmartre, so uh, listeners might like uh, to be tempted. I also have an article on best, um, you know, kind of dining in Montmartre and best vegetarian restaurants in Montmartre. So a little nod to Montmartre content on my website. And I also have, a, like you mentioned before, a podcast on the Paris Underground Radio Network, and it's called Romancing in Paris. And so it covers a different romantic spot in the city in every episode. And so those are short little episodes, are about 10 to 20 minutes. And so it's a nice little nugget of information on a specific place you might like to visit and often a more original place. So I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, under Je t'aime me neither. So uh, feel free to reach out and, and, and join along as I share great tips on Paris. Thank you so much, Lily. It was a pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Paris, a state of mind featuring Gail of Perfectly Paris and Marie of Lokim, both who are founding members of the SPLM. Paris, a state of mind is produced by Paris Underground Radio. The music, Jazz in Paris, is by Media Right Productions. For more information on this show and others, go to parisundergroundradio.com. This episode of Paris' State of Mind was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio.